fly fisherman fans as promised um, I wanted to do a video on exactly what I carry in my vest and uh, I just pulled my vest out of my bag which is in my garage oops I'm just gonna leave it like it is and show you exactly what I have in this thing this is my old Orvis guide vest um, I'm gonna say I've had this thing for probably the better part of 20 plus years and um, just accumulated all this stuff in my vest and we're gonna go over what's in it and uh, again for those of you that haven't watched some of my, my earlier videos I was a guide in Colorado like 1984 to 2006 um, in one form or another all over the fly fishing industry had a couple of different vests over the years but this was the one I've had the longest and still have um, I am in Colorado, in Colorado for a couple more months, and then I am my my wife and myself and our dog are moving to another part of the United States where I will pursue redfish the rest of my life. So I don't know what I'm going to do with all my trout stuff, but I've got it here. Anyway, here it is. This is my vest, and we're going to go through it pocket by pocket and see exactly what the grumpy fly fisherman carries with them. I'm gonna, I'll start with the outside, just your basic stuff, and then we'll get into some pockets. Let's start with the fly patch. On the fly patch is a hippie stomper. It's an old one. It's been there for a while. So, it's probably done and tired. This is all your standard stuff. Um, I've got some fly floating from Loon. This is an old bottle, as you can tell by the logo on there. And then uh, my tippet dispenser is kind of losing some of its elastic abilities here. And what I like to do is I carry spools of, I have one spool of three on here, 3X, and it's nylon. Let me get this, oh, I'll mess with that later. And then I've got um, one spool each of uh, nylon and fluorocarbon and 4X, 5X, 6X, and 7X. Uh, just so I'm always covered. I don't use fluorocarbon unless I'm nymph fishing uh, because it's just harder for fish to see and it's more abrasion resistant. Um, it does have a tendency to be a little more brittle around knots though. So that's all attached to the outside of my vest. Hemostats. Um, I, a long time ago, I got 20 pairs of these cheap, whatever, four or five dollar hemostats. I just clip them onto my vest like so, so they're always available. I don't keep them on with a cord or anything I feel like gets in the way. And um, if I lose them, it's no big deal. They're just a couple of bucks. And they're smooth jaw for pinching down barbs. So that's the front of the left side on the outside. On the other side, I've got um, sheepskin fly patch, which I don't use very often. And then I've got an old Orvis uh, double zinger here. And I've got my Sims Pro Guide nippers. Always important to have a good pair of nippers. They're magnetic, uh, work really well. And then I've got a leader straightener, which I use often. Um, probably not everybody does, but when you pull, when you store rods and leaders are on reels, um, they start cool up, curling back up. I always like to have a leader straightener uh, available so I can run that. And this is a loon version. Um, my older versions I've worn out. But uh, super important, you want to get those curls out of your leaders before you start fishing so your line is laying flat and not creating a commotion on the water. Um, I'm going to start with the outside pockets, what I have in here. There's probably going to be some surprises in here. For instance, like random strike indicators that I have probably found while I was fishing. I don't use these. Um, this is called a dots indicator. They're pretty sweet. You've seen these. I don't use them. And then for some reason, I've got this old, but really old. This is probably 25 to 30 years old. A spool of, it looks like 10 pound amnesia, which I use for butt sections. Um, fly line to fly leader. I have no idea why that's in there. Um, Upper pockets on the other side. Let's see what we got in here. 
Um, oh, yeah. Some Loon Top Ride. I like to use this on my CDC patterns. Dry them out. Ready available. And I have had this box. These are my strike indicators that I prefer to use. This is an old Seven Lakes Lodge box, um, plastic box, highly unorganized. I've used these cork and stick indicators since I started fly fishing pretty much. Um, they're my favorite, they're easy. They're very easy to adjust on the line. They don't kink your leader. Uh, they land pretty soft and they've always been perfect for me. You guys can fish with whatever options you like, whatever you prefer. So those are my strike indicators. I don't use them very often. And now let's get into our um, lower front pockets. This vest has a lot of them. Um, this is an Ames fly box. I don't, I hate this fly box. I need to get, this is why. Look at that. I scold people for using San Juan worms and eggs. <laughs> Look at them all. I got them. Um, I don't use this box often, but sometimes I do. Um, I got squirmies in here, traditional San Juan worms. I even have, look, a mop fly. They're there. And then this is a big old peanut fly. Somehow it ended up in this box. This box is, I don't like the foam in this box. It was a freebie when I worked in the fly shop. I need to swap this out. I've got, I swap fly boxes as the seasons go. Um, so that fly box needs to go away. Maybe one lucky winner will get it. Um, then I've got a couple of MFC boxes. You can see here, big beadhead nymphs, a couple more mop flies, stones. This guy's loose. A bunch of chocolate foam emergers in here. Yeah, so just a variety of nymphs in this box. I don't like using that box either. <laughs> like, you know, I'm a dry fly guy. Um, Another MFC box, my Colorado box. And this has a lot of big foam patterns in it. So hippie stompers, peanuts, Chernobyls, along with a bunch of emerger patterns I like to tie, and then my trudes, and uh, some miscellaneous stuff. My Mardi Gras nymphs I have in here, rainbow warriors. Oh, mini leeches, that's one of my favorites. So yeah, those are all in here. Random, unorganized. You know, wouldn't exactly say my fly boxes look like Pat Dorsey's, but whatever. <laughs> whatever you got to do. Um, these pockets I don't use very often. I never have liked these pockets, um, but you could use them. Oh, there's a some kind of fly in here. There's a fly stuck in the fabric. I don't know what it is. I'll have to look inside here, see what it is. It is nothing. Just a torn up fly. Okay, so that's that side, front pockets. Front pockets on the other side. Um, I actually use these lower pockets here just for one thing. Dinsmore split shot. I have been fishing with number four Dinsmore split shots for almost 40 years. It's my go-to size. Looks like there's some random flies stuck down in here too. Who knows how long these things... Oh yeah, there's like a pile of flies in here. An old emerger. <laughs> Boom. Torn up. And then some leaves. Anyway, that's where I like to keep my Dinsmore split shot. Um, then I have, this is an old, old box from Columbine Outfitters where I used to guide of my small dry flies. There's a loose one right here. So dry flies, small stuff. Um, yeah, everything from Griffiths gnats to parachute atoms to Comparaduns, little caddis in here. Put some emergers I tie that, you know. And then this is a midge box. I just got this one this year, actually. Um, I got this at Flies and Lies and Deckers. This is a little magnetic midge box. I like to keep my little zebras in here. There's a couple other patterns in here. Just super small. Size um, 18s to... There's even some 30s in here right here. So that's my midge box. Um, I like the magnetic style of that for midges because um, it's hard to get them in and out of foam. So that's two boxes in one pocket. And this is my old Wheatley 
that was given to me at <laughs> that was given to me well Creelex fly that was given to me by um, an old friend of mine who turned into a guy that kind of person we used to make fun of together um, anyway it was, a, it was a I was in his wedding party and this was my gift it says Larry Gro engraved Larry Grossman ripping lips this must be 30 years old at this point. And then it's got a nice inscription on the back from a river runs through it. It's all worn out. Box is dented. Got big dents in it. Um, and then more nymphs, midges. Just all rusty because I've gotten this box wet so many times. I kind of like the rust. Gives it some flavor. So that's a Wheatley box. And hey, look. There's a swivel in there. Who knows how long that's been in there. And then um, another double Wheatley box for more dries. Ooh, devil bugs. That's a good one. And uh, beadhead nymphs. More rust. I love it. Rust, rust, and more rust. That's a seasoned fly box right there. Again, I've had this box probably the same. Another 30 plus year old fly box. So that's the front of my vest. Um, let's go inside the front of the vest. Uh, first thing we'll go to is right here. This is a whistle. Um, when you're old like me, um, I like to have this. I fish by myself a lot. Um, if you ever get in trouble, you know, hopefully you can still blow a whistle. That's in my inside pocket. I have it looped uh, to the inside of my vest. That's always there. Nothing in that pocket. That's like a sunglass pocket. Um, what do I got in here? This is probably another. reason I don't have stuff on these inside pockets is because my outside pockets are so full I can't get anything in them. Oh, but in this one, I've got something that I have had since my first year fly fishing when I learned in Yellowstone National Park. This is called, all you old guys know what this is. This is called a Tippet Master. And I bought this at Bud Lilly's Trout Shop in West Yellowstone. Uh, my first summer out west, I worked in Yellowstone National Park, which is where I learned how to fly fish. And I used to fish with a guy named Duke Brown. Still one of my best friends today. He lives up in Bozeman. He had one of these and I had to get one. Um, it's basically six spools and some of the plastic is broken on this thing. It's so old. I don't even know if it'll, oh, there we go. So six spools. And what you had to do is take the tippet from the tippet spools and hand wrap it onto these mini spools. And then you feed the end of the tippet out of these little holes. It's awesome. And then you just pull out whatever tippet you need out of here. Uh, looks like I had three, four, two, three, four, five, six, and seven in here. Still do. But the problem with it is it wraps the leader, the tippet material, really tight, so it comes out kind of coiled. Leader straightener. But anyway, um, I never use this anymore, but it's always in my vest. I haven't used this thing probably for, I bet it's been 20, 25 years. But it's still in there. It's a cool thing. Um, whistle, pockets empty. Uh, for some reason I've got a couple of zip ties for some, who knows, in my vest. Maybe back when I owned boats, I had those in there for some reason. And, uh, the back pockets, probably not a lot in here. More boxes, maybe. Big back pocket where sometimes I'll throw a couple of sodas or a sandwich or something. Oh, there's a fly box in here. Um, this is actually a box that I found on uh, the Eagle River. Back when I used to run the Eagle River program. Dry flies. It's a floating foam box. Stimulators, hoppers. Uh, there's some truths in here. There's a lot of Dave's hoppers. I love that pattern. And then some Turks tarantulas, uh, Chernobyl in there. Yeah, so big dry flies, warm weather box. That's the only thing in the back of that right now. Um, 
I'll carry extra real spools sometimes in these back pockets. Oh, this is another nymph box. More eggs. Oh, these are sweet patterns. These I used to tie these uh, caddis emergers or, so, or um, soft hackles just with four olive colored beads and then a soft hackle. That's a really good pattern, by the way. Don't tell anybody. And then some random flies in here. So that's in one of my back pockets. There's a lot of gar. Oh, a flashlight. Let's see if it works. It does work. Unreal. A little camo flashlight, mag light. Never know. Put that back in there. Um, this other back pocket has nothing. This is typically where I'll put a spare spool for a reel. Um, that's kind of it. I think that's everything in my vest. Like I said, I've been wanting to show you my vest. And that's it. And uh, I've worn this thing for a large portion of my life. It's done me well. But I'm leaving the West. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff. Um, who knows? Anyway, LG the Grumpy Fly Fisherman. That's an overview of my fly fishing vest and what I carry with me on the river. Um, I am going to be, less than a week now, I'm going to be down in Florida. And we are going to be doing a bunch of saltwater stuff and brackish water stuff. Uh, it's long story, but it's a family vacation. Um, I'll be mid-panhandle of Florida. And uh, I'm going to try and fish a couple different spots, but basically we're staying on the beach. So I'll be doing a lot of surf casting, just walking out to the beach and surf casting. And um, got some stuff here, some fluorocarbon saltwater stuff. I've got an Orvis four piece, eight weight. I've already got um, an eight and a nine weight down in Florida, a spay rod. And then I've got this new, I haven't fished this yet. Um, this is an Echo Prime. Uh, this is a four piece, 10 weight. So this is an eight foot 10, 10 weight. This is going to Florida with me. And then I've got some big reels, spools, extra lines that I'm bringing as well. So that's it, man. Um, the journey continues. LG, the grumpy fly fisherman. Um, we are packing up the house right now and getting ready for our move. A lot of work, but it's awesome. I'm super excited. And uh, thanks for watching. And please subscribe. And give me some likes. If you think this video, again, you know my deal. If you think the video sucks, give me a thumbs down. I'm cool with that. But anyway, that's what I carry. Hopefully that helps you organize your stuff a little better because my stuff's all over the place. And um, I'll be back with another video. Probably the next video is going to be from Florida. So stay tuned to the Grumpy Fly Fisherman because uh, in about a week I'm not going to be grumpy. I'm going to be relaxing and fishing, taking care of some more uh, moving stuff when I get down to Florida with my wife. And uh, my stepdaughter will be down there as well with us. I'm out. See you next time on the Grumpy Fly Fisherman.